Welcome everyone to our celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles. We are so blessed and honored that you have joined with us today. We have our very, very dear friend and special guest, Dr. Larry Huck with us. Pastor Larry, welcome back again. It's great to be with you for this special celebration. It, Gary, it is so good to be with you and all of our friends and family at Cornerstone. You know, we, we love Cornerstone. We love you guys, all of you guys there and all the partners from Cornerstone, you guys do such an amazing job of bringing the gospel to the world. So it is such an honor to be with you. And especially during this amazing time, this appointed time, this Moedim pastor of the Feast of Tabernacles. You know, the Feast of Tabernacles pastor comes every year, but if you look at the news and you look at what's going on around us, uh, I really believe the Lord is shouting to everyone who has eyes to see and ears to hear that the Messiah is getting ready to do amazing, amazing things. You know, uh, you and I talk all the time and you've heard me say that in ancient Hebrew, there's no word for coincidence. Right. That's why Jesus said, let them ha who have eyes to see and ears to hear. He said, there are those who have eyes, but they don't see and ears that they don't hear. And we need to realize that not only is this an amazing time, a, an appointed time where God opens the windows of heaven, this time during the Feast of Tabernacles, but you look at what all the craziness that's going on in the world. Every one of you that are watching right now, it is not a coincidence that you're watching this during the time of the Feast of Tabernacles because God is getting ready to defeat the enemy and do great, great things for his children. So, Gary, I'm so excited to be with you guys today. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I am a too. This is one of my favorite times of the year. Of course, we know that there are three what they call traveling feasts. The first one is Passover, which we celebrated during Holy Week. The second is Pentecost, 50 days after Resurrection Sunday. And now we're celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles here in the fall. Let me read to you Leviticus 23, 2, because I believe, Pastor Larry, this answers a question that a lot of New Testament believers have. The Lord says in Leviticus 23, 2, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. The Lord said, these are my feasts. And Dr. Larry, so many Christians ask, aren't those just Jewish feasts and celebrations? Right. Aren't those just Old Testament feasts? What do you say to that? You know, that, that scripture right there that you just read, Pastor, is one of the most important uh, scriptures in understanding the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Pentecost or Shavuot, the Feast of Tabernacle or in Hebrew Sukkot, because that is something that a lot of Christians have um, been schooled to say, well, these are, these are Old Testament feasts. These are Jewish feasts. You know, you remember where the Lord says, don't remove one jot or one tittle? Yes. Now, the reason he says that is because when you take the Old Testament, when you take the Torah, every word is there for a tremendous revelation. As a matter of fact, every letter is there for a tremendous revelation. 
And so this is not a light thing when the Lord says, these are my feasts. They are holy convocations, which means they're, they're holy rehearsals for what is going to happen someday in the realm of eternity. And so um, let, me, let me put it this way. God gave these to the Jewish people first. But if we remember what God said through Abraham and Israel, he said, all the world will be blessed because of you. All the world will be blessed. And through Jesus, we have been grafted in. The Lord tells us that Abraham is our father. And so we have been grafted in. Uh, a better way to say it in English is, um, I always think in Hebrew, in English is we've been adopted. And so the family of Israel that we have been in, adopted into through Jesus he is saying that you're now part of Israel. You're part of the blessings of Abraham, the blessings of God of Israel. And one of the greatest things we can understand is the Lord says to us, these are my feasts and they are my feasts. They are holy and they are holy forever. And I looked up the word forever, and it means forever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so these are holy feasts, even today, for all of us Gentiles who have been grafted in, Pastor, to the nation of Israel. So when we look at keeping the feast, when we look at the blessing of the feast, you know, the, the, the Bible says, is there not? Pastor, an, an appointed time. Is there not an appointed time? And I like to say it this way. God is God 24-7. Every moment of every day, God is God. But the scriptures say, call upon the Lord while he is near. Well, what does that mean? On God's, on God's calendar, on God's appointed times in Hebrew, Moedim, pastor, God is God's the same God, but his power, his blessing, his anointing is greater during these windows of heaven. It's greater than ever before. As a matter of fact, um, right now we're in that season that in Hebrew it says the king is in the field the king being almighty God. And it says right now in this appointed time, the king has come off of his throne and wow. he comes to each and every one of us. And there is nothing during this time of the Feast of Tabernacle, there is nothing that we can ask of him that he will deny as long as we are in the, in, in the correct way, keeping this feast. So the understanding that yes, God gave this these feasts and the blessing of these feasts to the Jews first, you and I have now been grafted into those blessings. And one of every every Jewish rabbi, every Jewish scholar knows that uh, there's a prophecy that says, in the very last days, the days in which there's a preparation for the coming of the Messiah, the eyes of the Gentiles will be open and will begin to understand. One of the greatest rabbis in the history of Judaism that passed away only in the 90s, Rabbi Schneerson, he gave a prophecy right before he passed away. And he said these words, he said, the Messiah is ready to come. Now listen to this. The Messiah is ready to come. But one thing has to happen first. He said, the eyes of the Gentiles are going to be open. And they will begin to understand the Jewish roots of their faith. A Jewish Jesus, a Jewish Paul, a Jewish Peter, a Jewish Abraham, a Jewish Moses. And he said, 
they will begin to understand Rosh Hashanah, which we've just gone through, Yom Kippur, which we've just gone through, and now entering into Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. And he said this. He said, at first, the Jewish people will say, why are you doing this? Now, everyone that's watching, you need to receive this and share this with everyone. He said, at first, the Jewish people will say, why are you doing this? These are our feasts. But then the blessing of God will become so strong on these Gentiles who begin to understand these feasts that the blessing will be so great on these Gentiles that it will get the world's attention and together Jews and Gentiles will begin to serve God and we will welcome in the Messiah. Now you think about Malachi chapter three, he says, I'll open the windows of heaven and I'll pour you out such a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it. And what does it say? All the world will call you blessed. When, when God speaks in Malachi, pastor, when God speaks in Malachi, folks, he's taught, he says, return unto me. That word return in Hebrew is teshuvah. Return to me and I, almighty God, I, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Mekedesh, Jehovah Shalom, I will return to you. And, and let me just throw this in. I have been teaching on the Feast of the Lord for almost 30 years. We have never needed God to open up the windows of heaven and become Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sitkanu, Jehovah Make It Us. We have never needed it in our country, in America, and the world like we do right now. Right now. I agree. And so when, when God says, return to me, they said, how do we return? And he gives a very Jewish answer. He says, in your tithe, we understand that, but in your offerings besides. Now, I want everybody to hear this. Have ears to hear and eyes to see. Why, when God says, return unto me, and I will... Almighty God, with all my power, I will return. Let me just say this. I will return to America. I will bring America back to the way it's supposed to be. I will make America a godly place again. When God says that, why did he say, here's how you return, in your tithe and in your offering. Now, every Christian knows what a tithe is. A tenth is the Lord's. But then he says, offerings besides. Now, so many times we think the offering is, well, we give a tithe, and then we give a little more for this little project or that thing. But you got to understand that in Malachi, God is speaking to Jewish people who understand exactly what he's talking about. And Pastor, if I can just give a very quick history. Malachi, the Israelites, the Jewish people, have just come out of 70 years of Babylonian captivity. I want everybody to understand this. Malachi, every, every, every pastor understands the tithe. But Malachi is called, if you look in many of your Bibles, it's called the Great Assembly. The Jews have been in Babylonian captivity for 70 years. They've been released. This is what the book of Esther is all about, of God doing a miracle and releasing his children. Boy, we need that right now. We need God to do a miracle for such a time as this. We need God to do a miracle in our country and a miracle in your life, folks. And so they're out of Babylon God has done a miracle, and they're now meeting in Jerusalem, and it's called the Great Assembly. And all the prophets are there. All the sages are there. And they begin to pray, and they're saying, God, what do we need to do so that the enemy doesn't destroy us anymore, doesn't 
take us into captivity. And so they're praying and God answers through the prophet Malachi. He says, return unto me, Teshuvah, and the time leading up to the Feast of Tabernacles is called in Hebrew the time of Teshuvah. It's the time of blowing the trumpet. It's the time of sounding the alarm. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm. It's a wake up call. And that's what God is doing right now. That's why you're watching. It is a wake up call. God is saying, I want all of you who claim Jesus as your Lord and Savior to wake up and return to me. Now, the reason why Israel was defeated is because they basically said, we don't need God anymore. We're in our country, our vineyards are flowing, our, our herds are growing, our businesses are doing well. We don't really need God anymore. And Pastor Gary, they stopped tithing. They stopped celebrating what's called Shemitah, the seventh year, the holy year. And they stopped bringing three times a year the offerings to Jerusalem that opens the windows of heaven. Now, I want to just say this to America. I think in a lot of ways, the church in America ha is in the same place that Israel was wow. when the Babylonians defeated them. You know what? We're doing well. We're prospering. We're, we're uh, our jobs, our businesses. And then all of a sudden, God brings the Babylons to begin to shut the kingdom of God down. And so they gather together. And they said, God, what do we do? And pastor, God says, return to me. That's great. How do we return? Three times a year, you come before the Lord and you don't come empty handed. Why? Because God doesn't need our money. But where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And so when we return, to building the kingdom of God through our three times a year, when we return to that, God said, I will show you, I will prove to you that I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it and all the world will call you blessed. Pastor, I, I want to give a prophetic word right here. I believe that God is trying to get our attention. Come on, come on, I prophesy. I believe God is prophesy. saying, wake up. Get serious about serving God. Get back. You know, as a pastor, we, we know that before your body leaves the church, your offering first leaves the plate. Because where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart will be. That's why God said, get your heart back because you're, you understand that it is me, God says, who is Jehovah Jireh, your provider. It's not Washington. It's not Wall Street. God says, I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider. And I, I prophesy that the Christians whose eyes are open and understand the blessing of returning to our Jewish roots, the blessing, Pastor, of sowing that first fruit offering. You watch in such an amazing way, God open over you, your family, your church, your ministry, whatever you're doing, God open the windows of heaven. That word window is the Hebrew word you showed. And it literally means an unobstructed, a funnel, a funnel from the throne of God, an unobstructed funnel. Right now, when we respond to the first fruit offering of the Feast of Tabernacle, an unobstructed funnel from the throne of God to every one of your lives is open and God pours us out a blessing that is so marvelous that all the world will call us blessed. 
Every year, Feast of Tabernacles is vitally important. But this year, Pastor Gary, I believe this is the beginning of the end time transfer of wealth. This is the beginning of the outpouring of signs and wonders and miracles. And everyone that's watching now, it's not a coincidence. You're watching right now, right now, because this is your appointed time and God is getting ready to do amazing things. And, 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 you know, and I love what you said, how the Lord said in the last days, he's going to open the eyes and the ears of the Gentile believers Absolutely. to see these truths. And Dr. Larry, I just want to say to you on behalf of our Cornerstone Television family, the Lord has used you in such a significant way to help Thanks. open our eyes. Your teachings, your truths, the principles now that you have been sharing with us has really been mightily used by the Lord. And I just want to say thank you. You know, I've been a pastor now for 40 years. We didn't always celebrate the feasts. But ever since we've been doing them, I can tell you it has brought blessing upon blessing upon yes. blessing to our church. Yes. And I'm just so thankful for you and the anointing you carry. And I am sure you pay a price for that anointing. When we first started teaching the Jewish roots of our faith, and, and, and if I can explain to all people, because I know a lot of you are watching for, for maybe the first time and hearing the Jewish roots of our faith, let me explain that it was new to me 30 years ago. And I made my first trip to Israel. And I went there and saw things and experienced things. And I realized a lot of the things that I have been taught by really, really wonderful, godly people was not Bible, but it was denomination. And I thank God for every denomination that upslips the name of Jesus. But in the last days, the eyes of the Gentiles will be open. You think about, you think about folks, Ephesians chapter two, where the Bible says that we will add to our faith their knowledge, their being the Jewish people. We will add to our faith, our faith that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior, but we will add to that faith the knowledge of the Jewish people. You know, when, when Jesus taught and he said, it is written, or it's written down, where was it written down? What's he quoting? He's quoting what we call, <coughs> pardon me, the Old Testament. Jesus didn't come to teach anything new. He came to die on the cross to forgive us of our sins and graft us in to Abraham being our father and our eyes being open. What did the Lord say? He said, my people are destroyed because of their lack of knowledge. Yes. Think about that. My people those who love me, those who believe in me, those who pray to me, those who have received me as their Lord and Savior. My people destroyed one thing, lack of knowledge. And so if you read Ephesians chapter two, it tells us something right before the second coming. It says the wall between Jews and Gentiles will be torn down. That wall that was made not by God, but by man that wall between Jews and Gentiles will be torn down with Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone, and we will become one new man. What the rabbi was saying was, is that when you and I begin to understand the, the feast of Passover, the feast of Sukkot, Pentecost, the feast of uh, 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 Shavuot, Pentecost, the feast of Sukkot, feast of Tabernacles, you're going to become so blessed, so blessed. The windows of heaven, think about this. The window of heaven 
is ready to open up over you. <laughs> and yes. God has you watching Cornerstone for this appointed time. And all we have to do is respond to this. You know, Pastor, I was going to save this till the end. But the Bible says, you know, there is a, there is a teaching. I want everybody to hear this. There is a, a, a teaching in Hebrew called the avot or avos, and it means a, the father of something. It, it means like, for example, if you have the Ten Commandments, the first commandment, the father commandment, the first one, God is God, birth creates all the blessings of the other commandments. If you don't have the first blessing, you can't get all the rest of them. Right. Take um, the armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. If you don't have the first one, our loins girt about with truth. If you don't have the first one, the Abel's, the father, none of the rest of the blessings work. The very first blessing in the Bible is Genesis chapter 12. I will bless those who bless Israel. That is the first blessing. That blessing births all the rest of the blessings that we find in the Bible. I will, God says, God says, I will bless those. I will, I will bless every one of you who blesses Israel. And the reason I bring this up is because Cornerstone is always such a blessing to the nation of Israel and what we do in Israel. Amen. And God says, when you bless Israel, I will bless you. And let me just share this. And, and many of you have heard the testimony. Three years ago, they diagnosed my seven-month-old grandson, Lion, with a very rare form of cancer. And basically, they had never seen a child his age with this kind of cancer survive. They came back several weeks later and said, we checked this with the heads of children's cancer around the world. There is nowhere, nowhere, any medical history of a child lion's age having this gene we found in him, and it's a positive gene, and it took him from no chance of surviving, and, and, and these great, great doctors and nurses would never say no chance, but they'd never had a child survive, to 95% chance. We just got back a couple days ago, last week from vacation, our grandson, Lion, three years old, I'm out fishing with him in the pond and we're running down the trails. God did a miracle, and I want to say this, that no one had ever seen before in the history of children's cancer for my grandson. While the same time we're going through that, they diagnosed his with ovarian cancer seven or eight hour operation, basically gave her three months to live. This was two and a half years ago. Lion is cancer free. Tiz is cancer free. The doctors told Tiz, we're sitting there in the office three months and they said, you have a certain gene and we need to check your sons, your daughters, your grandsons, your granddaughters because this gene will pass on. Now, I want everybody to listen to me right here. When we give a, one of the things that I teach for years and years is breaking family curses, breaking generational curses. Amen. When Jesus died on the, when Jesus died, he died on the cross because cursed is he who hangs on a tree. Jesus didn't just take our sin, he broke every curse and released every blessing through his blood. I, I, I know you've got a pamphlet, we showed Jesus all through 
the Feast of Tabernacles. We came back into that doctor and the doctor said, I can't explain it. Tis, you don't have this gene. It won't pass on to your children. It won't pass on to your grandchildren. And the, it gives the treatment a chance to work. My grandson is healed by the power of God. My Hallelujah. wife is healed by the power of God. And I understand, and I want you all to understand, that when we give a first fruit offering during the Feast of Tabernacle, and we bless the nation of Israel, God opens the windows of heaven on your job, on your business, but we are in the end times. Listen to me. We are in the end times, and God is going to not only bring us an end time transfer of wealth, the wealth of the wicked into the hands of the righteous, but God is getting ready to release right now. He is doing it right now. Signs and wonders and miracles. Folks, this is an appointed time, and when you respond and be a blessing to Cornerstone, which is always a blessing to the nation of Israel, God is right now. You can't put a price tag on my grandson being healed, my wife being healed. Can you imagine what God is getting ready to do right now at this appointed time for you and your family. It is an amazing time, Pastor. Amen. Yes, it is. So we want to give you an opportunity to sow a first fruits offering into this Feast of Tabernacle celebration. The window is open right now. We're in a period of eight days of an appointed time. And for your best gift, we would like to send to you this Feast of the Bible pamphlet. Now, for many of you, if you are watching and listening to this and this is new to you, this will help you to understand and explain more about these feasts of the Lord. For your best gift of any amount, we'll send you this pamphlet which is the Feast of the Bible, plus we've got the Balm of Gilead anointing oil. Oh, this is so, so precious. Frankincense and myrrh, a beautiful scent. You can anoint your children. You can anoint your checkbook. I anoint my mailbox. I anoint things around the house. You can anoint yourself and others for healing. For your best gift, the Feast of the Bible pamphlet and the uh, Balm of Gilead anointing oil is our way of saying thank you for sowing your first fruits offering. Now, for those of you that could sow a 500 dollar gift or more. Oh, we've got some wonderful, wonderful gifts. First of all, we have this black and gold Joseph Talit. This is amazing. You can put it on. It's your <laughs> secret place where you can go to prayer. If you've right. got a Talit, why don't you order one for a gift for someone else. And then we've got this amazing illuminated Torah. This is, Dr. Huck, this is to me one of the greatest gifts we've ever offered. I've got one. I know you have one. These, this, this tallit, which is a prayer shawl, which is a secret place, this Torah book, is a gift for those of you that could sow at least $500 or more. Maybe some of you could sow $1,000 or $2,000. Whatever the Lord is putting upon your heart. And then, as Dr. Huck shared, we always like to bless Israel in a tangible, physical, natural way. We are going to take the tithe of every gift that comes in 
during this Feast of Tabernacles. And Dr. Huck, you have a project called Project Aliyah, which is helping Jews return back to Israel. We are going to tithe every gift to Project Aliyah. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, you know, uh, let me read every one of you. You know, you, all of you watching right now and uh, need to understand, I hope you understand the miracle of you watching and being part of the Feast of Tabernacle uh, first fruit gift. All of this is Bible prophecy. And, and I don't say this lightly. All of this is Bible prophecy that shouts the Messiah is on his way. But let me give you another uh, Bible prophecy that happens right before the coming of the Messiah. I want to read to you Isaiah 49, 22. It says, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will lift my hand in an oath to the nations, to the Gentiles and set up my standard for the peoples. They shall bring your sons in their arms and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulder. Now, let me explain that to you. What aliyah means, the word aliyah in Hebrew means to come up. And we partner with the government of Israel. We have for many, many, many years in fulfilling this Bible prophecy of the Jews returning to the land of Israel. Now, I want you to understand that this only happened in 1948. 2,000 years, the Jewish people have been waiting for the fulfillment of the prophecy that God would gather them from the four corners of the earth and bring them back to the nation, the land of Israel. This is where many people, Pastor, said, this proves your Bible is a fairy tale. It's never happened before in the history of the world where a nation has lost their land. They have no government, no army, no language, nothing. They have nothing and come back and regain their land. It's a fairy tale. Your Bible is a fairy tale full of false prophecies. But when God says he's going to do it, he <laughs> will do it. And yes. in 1948, Israel, after 2,000 years, became a nation. Now listen, God said, when this happens, this will be me waving a banner, a flag in front of everyone saying, the generation that sees Israel become a nation again that is the nation, that is the generation that will see the coming of the Messiah. But right at the end of that generation, right before the coming of the Messiah, God said not only will the Jews return to the land of Israel, but Gentiles will be helping make this happen. He said the Gentiles, I make an oath to the Gentiles that you will bring my children in your arms and on your shoulders. That's what Cornerstone is doing with us, partnering with us as we partner with the nation of Israel. We have partnered with the government of Israel to bring hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Jewish people back to the land of Israel. Think about this. Not only is when you give a Feast of Tabernacle offering, does God say, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. But when we use a first fruit offering to also be a blessing to the nation of Israel, fulfilling end time prophecy, this is, God says, I will prove to the world that I am God by showing the world the blessing that I bring on you and your family. And the feast, during the time of Passover, there are three certain blessings that come with that first fruit. During the time of Pentecost, 
Shavuot, there are basically two main blessings that come with that first fruit offering. But during the time of the Feast of Tabernacle, Sukkot, it is unlimited blessing that is released on that offering. Couple that with where we are in the world right now, with, with what Satan is doing. Couple that with being a blessing to the nation of Israel. Now, let me tell you what project and Aliyah bringing Jews back to the nation of Israel. We are, we are working, and I'm allowed to say this, for months, Pastor Gary, I wasn't allowed to say what we're doing, but we are working with the nation of Israel. There is a, a village of Jewish men, women, and children in the country of Kakistan. I, I'm probably saying that a little wrong. Kakistan. And right now, Russia, Putin, is trying to bring Kakistan back under what was formerly the Soviet Union. We have, this is a Muslim country right now. We have right now an open window, right now. And at this very moment, we are bringing a plane full. Now listen, to talk about breaking curses off of your life. We are bringing a plane full, the first plane, is a plane full of young people, young teenagers, to the nation of Israel. If Putin would bring that under the Soviet Union, he would force them, these young people, into the Russian military, and they would be forced, when God puts the hook in the jaw of Gog and Magog and brings them down to fight Israel, they would be forced to fight against the nation of Israel as young Jews. But by you and I stepping up and blessing the nation of Israel, these young people are getting ready right now. I mean, it is happening as we speak. They are going to move to the nation of Israel. They will become Israeli citizens and they will not have to fight against Israel, but stand for the Amen. nation of Israel. Amen or the coming of the Messiah. Then the next plane we're gonna bring in will be their moms, their dads, their grandmas, and their grandpas. Let me say one thing about the Torah book, Pastor Gary, that you held up. That Torah book, folks, if you look at it, it is leather bound. It is the most beautiful illustrations, biblical illustrations in that book. I mean, it is gorgeous. The first time we went to Israel, that is almost 30 years ago. That is the first thing. And I'm going to tell you something. That book is not inexpensive. That is a phenomenally generous uh, gift by the Cornerstone people. That it was the first thing that Tiz and I bought in the nation of Israel. Let me say one thing about the tallit. The tallit, as pastor said, is a Jewish prayer shawl. When you take the Jewish prayer shawl, and you put it over your head, and you pull the corners closed, this is exactly what Jesus is talking about, and pastor said it, this is your secret place. Jesus said, when I see you in the secret place, you know, the Bible says, when you go into your closet and you shut the door, you've got to understand, that translation has gone from English to Latin to all kinds of different languages and then into Israel. I remember, Pastor, I was teaching on the Talit, the Jewish prayer shawl, on a television program, Christian television program, and the, the guy grabbed his forehead and he goes, they didn't have closets in the time of Jesus. <laughs> you didn't go into your prayer closet. This is your prayer closet. This is your personal holy of holies. Now, let me show you a couple things on this. This is not a gimmick. I pray in the car. I pray when I'm walking. I pray uh, when I'm out feeding my horses or the cattle. I pray all the time. But when I really need an answer, when I'm in a battle and I need to hear from God, I will go into my prayer closet, cover my head, and shut the door. Why do you shut the door? And once again, I'm giving you the Jewish roots of your faith. When you shut the door, 
The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Let not that man think when he prays, he receives anything from the Lord. And excuse me if this doesn't come off right, but I'm just going to show you this. When I really am in need of hearing from God, I will go into my prayer closet. This is your personal holy of holies. And I cover my head and I shut the door. Why do you do that? Why do Jewish people do that? Because the once again, the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And let not that man think when he prays, he receives anything. So you're praying. I'm praying about lion. And we need a miracle. I'm praying about tis. And my mind is bombarded with all the facts, all the statistics, all what the doctor said. But when you go into your personal holy of holies and you shut the door, Satan is not allowed to speak to your mind. And so when you're praying, you are not double-minded. You are hearing the voice of God. Like I said, I pray everywhere, all the time. Just, you know, I, I, I could be out feeding my cows and I feel the presence of God and I just pray about something. But when I need not to be double-minded and I need my faith to be touched, I go under my tallit and I shut the door and Satan cannot come in and bombard me with statistics and with facts Amen. and with reasoning. This is where you get under this. This is where you get the renewing of your mind. Now, let me show you one more thing about the tallit. When the woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment. Now, remember, the woman with the issue of blood had tried everything. And she said, if I could touch the hem of his garment, I know that I'd be made whole. Your tallit is made of three different components. One is the big material. That's your secret place. When I see you in the secret place, I will reward you openly. The other is the strings, the knots, 613 knots, representing the promises and the power of God. But the third is the corner here. This corner, in English, we've translated it the hem. But in Hebrew, it is not called a hem. It is called a wing. Why did the woman, when she saw Rabbi Jesus wearing a, a Jewish prayer shawl, a tallit, why did this woman say, if I could touch the wing of his garment, I know that I'd be made whole. We've been talking to you about the windows of heaven out of Malachi. Read the end of Malachi, leading into you and I, that when the Messiah comes, he will come with healing in his wing. Yes. This is your prayers. This is the promise of God. But when Jesus comes, he will take your prayers and he will connect them not to the logos of God's word, but the living rhema of God's word. So the woman seeing Jesus knew that he was the Messiah and he would make the promises of God come alive and come with healing in his wing. Wow. Folks, <laughs> this is an amazing time. Yes. God is opening up. Listen to me. When I would go to the hospital and I went, little lion, our seven-month-old grandson was in the hospital 50-something days in a row. I went 40 days in a row. And I'm looking at this and I'm hearing this and I'm seeing this. But I would bring Lion and Luke and Jen, his mom and dad, and myself under this. And we dwell in the shadow of Almighty God. That's the power of revelation. And so, Pastor, I know we're almost out of time. I cannot emphasize enough the blessing that we live in because we have blessed Israel. The blessings that we have seen because when we give a first food offering, we always give three times a year. 
We expect God to open the windows of heaven and we take a part of that and we be a blessing to the nation of Israel. And the father of all blessings is, is when you bless Israel, almighty God will bless you. Folks, the phone number is there, 888-665-4483. Remember, for your best gift of any amount, pray, do your very best. We will send you the Feast of the Bible pamphlet and this Balm of Gilead anointing oil. For those of you that could sow a $500 gift or more, we will send you the Talit the black and gold Joseph Talit, as well as the illuminated Torah. The number is there, 888-665-4483. And remember, for every gift, we are tithing to the Aliyah Project to bring those Jews back to the Holy Land from Kakistan. A plain load of young people and then another plain load of their parents and grandparents and family members. Go to the phone, 888-665-4483. There are some of you, you could sow a, 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 a thousand dollar gift, a five thousand dollar gift to bless Israel. I, I, wa I want to read to you real quickly out of Deuteronomy 16, verses 16 and 17. It says three times a year. That's in Passover, Pentecost, and now in the Feast of Tabernacles. You shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Passover, the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles, and you shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Everybody can do something. Every man shall give as he is able to according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has blessed you. I'm going to ask Dr. Larry to just pray a blessing over you right now as you sow your Feast of Tabernacle gift while this window in heaven is open. Pastor Larry, we've got about two minutes. Would you please bless the people? Amen. You know, at, before we say the blessing, I want you to understand that it's unlimited blessing. Yes, it deals with finances. Yes, it deals with financial blessing, but it's unlimited blessing. This is where Jesus, Jewish Jesus said 30 Passover, 60 Pentecost, a hundredfold unlimited Feast of Tabernacles. Jewish Jesus is releasing to you revelation and that truth will set you free. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind the enemy in every area that comes against your people. In the area of health, in the area of family, in the area of children, marriage, home, business, whatever it is, we bind the devil and we release right now the open windows of heaven, unlimited miracle answers being released right now. Father, we call on your blessing as these wonderful people bless the nation of Israel and are obedient in the tabernacle offering, Father, release miracles and show the world that you are almighty God in every area in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, who is our Messiah. Amen. Amen. Dr. Larry Huck, we are honored, so blessed to have you. Thank you for sharing the truths of this powerful Feast of Tabernacle celebration. Remember, folks, we shall know the truth. It's the truth we know, and that truth will make us free. I'm going to give you our address. If you would like to just get that gift in the mail while this window is open, Cornerstone Television, we are at 1 Signal Hill Drive, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148 dash one four nine nine thank you for watching 
Remember to call 888-665-4483 and let's celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.